is Times Radio. 7.32 Times Radio Breakfast. Good morning to you. The Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch, writes in the Times today how she wants to change the Equality Act to both protect women and trans people. Kemi Badenoch joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Before we talk about all of that, which is really interesting, and just, you know, we're a week into the campaign so far. What's your verdict on how it's gone? What would you give yourselves out of 10 in terms of the campaign so far? I never give marks out of 10. Only the election results will determine how well we have done. Uh, I've been campaigning in my constituency, where uh, people are talking about issues like immigration, telling us they want to see more, asking for how we are different from other parties. And they think it's been an interesting campaign. A lot of people talking about the uh, national service uh, uh, announcement and, and what they made of that. So it's been interesting. It's the first time I fought uh, an election as a Secretary of State, which means it's uh, you get a different perspective. Do you, uh, does, has anyone talked to you about uh, gender issues on the doorstep? Oh, yes, yes. Very much so. What have they said to you? Uh, quite often they say thank you for the work that I have done. Uh, it's something that means most to women uh, and th they're the ones who tend to raise it. And strikingly, it often tends to be women who aren't conservative, uh, tend to be left-wing feminists, are the ones who I would say spontaneously spontaneously raise it. It's certainly not uh, in the top sort of three to five issues. But one of the things that I'm keen to emphasise is that we're able to do more than one thing at a time. No. And you don't have to just talk about one thing uh, in, uh, during an election. No, and I mean, I mean and this is a topic where you're trying to suggest something practical. Um, what, what does the change mean? In, I think practice is really important to this because you'll be accused of doing this because you want to reassure a certain uh, sector of your own vote. But this has to have a practical consequence, what you're talking about. You want to change the Equality Act. What's the reason? What will it change? Yes, it is a, it is a clarification change. And it's something that's been in the works for a while, certainly in terms of uh, uh, policy. It was slowed down because of what the SNP were doing with their gender recognition bill. We had to get through all of those court cases and, and some follow-on action. But, the, but it is about ensuring people understand the law. So the biggest issue we find is that people uh, use sex and gender interchangeably, which they always did in law, but now those two words tend to mean different things. And you find, for instance, a rape crisis centre being unable to exclude on the basis of biological sex because they're worried about being sued, people not really understanding what they should do in terms of building regulations on, you know, public toilets, and so many other, so many other areas where you find uh, public authorities thinking that by being that they, that they need to be inclusive, but doing so in a way that is actually exclusive. Uh, you know, using words like chest feeding instead of breastfeeding. There's a whole load of things that we have done uh, to try and help things, but emphasizing what the law means and what, and uh, the, is critical. And so, in your view sex, biological sex, is immutable. You can't change it. No, no, you cannot change uh, biological sex. You can, uh, and as we've seen with a lot of people who had gender dysphoria, you can identify as something different, and we have made accommodations in law to support that. That's what the protected characteristic of gender reassignment is, but it is quite different from, from sex. But if someone who has had gender reassignment surgery and has gone through the quite lengthy process of getting a gender recognition certificate... Mm. They are treated as if they have changed sex, so that's right, isn't it? They're, they would be allowed on single-sex wards. Um, so this is where the, we are clarifying. The, the, the Equality Act has always had exceptions for single-sex spaces. It always has had that. But because people don't uh, either don't understand the difference and also because we had some court judgments that said legal sex and biological sex were the same, that was not the intention of the law, we are re-clarifying that. But just, uh, uh, so it's interesting, in, in practice, what does that, that mean? Someone who actually has had uh, a gender recognition certificate, has had gender reassignment surgery. Mm. Are they regarded in law as having changed their sex and able to access single-sex spaces? So that will then depend on the provider. So, as I said, if you are uh, you know, using the rape crisis centre yeah. um, example, there's some rape crisis centres that say that they will treat um, women and trans, and, and trans women exactly the same. There are others who don't. And, and do it is up to it is it is up to the individual service provider to decide what it is that they want to do. I think, uh, as we saw in the uh, employment tribunal case of Ros Adams, that if women have been raped and say they only want to speak to biological um, women, that that is something that should be respected. But it also adds additional clarity to that space in between of self ID. A lot of the problems we have are around self identification, where people simply declare that they are someone that they uh, that. They 
that they are something different. And that is that is an area that does need tightening up. The number of people with a gender recognition certificate is uh, not that much. We have seen uh, an increase. But we want to make sure that those people who are choosing to exploit the legislation do not actually make life more difficult for trans people. Who that, is, that, is, that is one of the other things that we're doing. It is about women and girls, but it is also about transgender people, most of whom have been living their lives peacefully until others try to exploit the law. Who, who, who is trying to exploit that? I'm interested in that. Who, because you, there's an example you use in the Times, which is sort of a man dressing as a woman going into so the toilet. So let's, let's use the example of uh, Isla Bryson, a rapist, yeah. who declared that he was now a woman and wanted to be sent to a women's prison in Scotland, and that happened. That is not a trans person. That is somebody who is masquerading as trans yeah. to get um, easier treatment. We shouldn't pretend that these things don't happen. There are multiple, those are the, the stories that get in the papers. There are multiple instances of people uh, committing crimes and then declaring that they're trans so that they can get lighter punishment. We have to close the loophole on um, all of those things. Practicality is really important. I want to keep coming back to the practicality because I think mm. it's it, what it means on the ground. You're committed to single sex wards, for example. Mm. Um, the rules on single sex wards were breached 44,000 times last year because you couldn't actually deliver on single sex wards because there wasn't enough space we all know how the nhs works it works at this constant crisis point that's a problem you can, you can legislate all you like on equality mm. but ultimately if you don't fix the nhs you won't actually be able to to, to manage single sex wards and you failed forty four thousand times in a year to do that well i don't um i don't know where you've got the figure of 44 44 from it's widely but that reported argument, it's five thousand times in, in in one month but, 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 but they but, tried to do it it's, 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 it's a widely recognized figure okay but the point i'm making is that we need to be able to ensure that the law is clear. Of course, in practice, we also need to make sure that we are able to deliver that. But that does not mean that we shouldn't do anything about the law. We have invested more money in the NHS than ever before. I have sat uh, in Parliament voting through multiple budgets for more and more and more money for the NHS. Obviously, as we've seen with issues like the pandemic, money has tended to go uh, elsewhere from what we'd originally uh, intended. But what we are seeing and what we are trying to deal with is scenarios where there isn't actually an issue with uh, uh, single sex wards, where there is space and still the hospitals are worried about being sued uh, and about what the law says and they don't and they, and they ask for clarity and we're providing them that. But clarity. I think women would also like to, to, to know that if they do go in a hospital, they can get a single sex ward and that, that regularly doesn't happen. And that's a failing. And, and you might have chucked money at the NHS, but it hasn't worked. As I said... These are things which, of course, will be issues. There will be times that hospitals will be full. That does not mean we should not carry out uh, the legislative change. I'm here to explain what that legislative change we're proposing is. Of course, there'll be multiple yeah. scenarios where things do not necessarily manifest as we would want them. Those are things that the health service needs to tackle, uh, NHS England, hospitals. Uh, I'm sure the health secretary could give you more and more detail. Yeah, it's a moot point that you're making. I am trying to talk about why we are clarifying legal sex. Uh, yeah, but you represent the government. I'm just, inter I'm just interested. And biological sex. I understand that, but you're, you represent the government. I'm just interested in, you, in your thoughts on, on the government's record in this area. Is, is social care, this has come up uh, over the course of the morning uh, so far, is social care a sort of dirty phrase when it comes to British politics? 